Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Atomic Timekeeping Podcast. My name is Greg Anderson, and, uh, well, here's the promised video from last episode. I said I'd make a video for you, and I thought I'd have it done earlier than this, but, well, enough of that. I want to talk about the Atomics Clock, and there are a couple varieties you can uh, have in mind here, so uh, let's talk about this. Now, one is you could just go and buy this clock from just your favorite local discount store, find it on the internet, maybe under Atomics, or go to Clock Kit, and uh, you'll find this clock, and it already has the radio-controlled clock movement right there inside of it for you. Or, this is fun too, you could uh, purchase a movement like this from Clock Kit and go ahead and convert your own clock that you already have to radio control, which is what I did with this one here. I took a movement like this, your standard little AA powered quartz movement, and I replaced it with one of these, just like that. I had to do a little bit of a modification on the uh, case there, but in a lot of you know, your clocks, you won't have to bother with that. Also, you may notice I sort of stuck it in upside down because that just seemed to work out better, but that's another story. The thing is, um, there are instructions on this clock how to set it. Now, it doesn't uh, have the ability to just zero in on its own time zone and set itself completely, so it asks you to set the clock manually. And uh, what you need to do here is just turn the dial like you would on any regular quartz clock that you might have, like this old-fashioned kind here and you turn it ahead to what would be about the correct time. So right now it's about 10 minutes after 3 o'clock right here in the mountain time zone where I am. So I'm just going to move that hand right down there to the uh, 310 position and then I'll stick a battery in this clock. And then be aware of this red button on the back. What it wants you to do in order to set the clock correctly, I can, you know, figure out how to put a battery in, Okay, you stand by and you press the red button when it reaches the 12 o'clock straight up position, like so. And then, when it passes over the minute hand, in this case when it gets to the uh, 11 second mark, which would be right there, I push the button again. And um, that's ready to go. It's going to start setting itself. Uh, receiving WWVB and, and go for it. And then if I want to press this uh, red button a third time, it's got a little indicator there. And with that uh, giving you good strong beeps once each second like it's doing right there, that's a good indicator that it's picking up WWVB pretty well. The radio reception is, is good, and so therefore um, I've got it in a good place to set itself. If that beep is more intermittent, it sounds kind of staticky, or it's just a continuous beep, then that's an indication that it's really not in a good place uh, to set itself to receive WWVB. Now the other way that you can set one of these clocks, and I'll do this with this one here, it's a similar thing. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to back it up, because when you set it this way, the, the last 15 minutes of movement should be in a clockwise direction. So I'm going to take this back to a quarter to three, like so, and then I'm going to move it up and put it in the straight up three o'clock position as far as the minute and hour hands are concerned. So right there, I'm straight up 12 o'clock, and I've purposely uh, stopped these clocks with the second hand approaching the 12 o'clock position, but not quite there, because I don't want to have to wait too long to set it. So I'll do the same thing here. I'll put, a, I'll put a battery in, and then I'll stand by on the red button. When it reaches the 12 o'clock position, I'll press, and then, see I pressed it exactly one tick later. So these clocks are both in the process of setting themselves right now. And what they'll do, as you can uh, see with these clocks, they are doing a double step ticking uh, kind of twice every two seconds. So this is an indication that, hey, you know, I know I've got, the, I've got the instructions on how I'm supposed to set myself. I'm trying now. Just give me a couple minutes here to zero in on WWVB to process the information I receive, and then I'll be able to set the clock. The little procedure I did with pus pushing the, the red button uh, informs the clock of the position of the second hand relative to the minute hand. 
And um, some of the other clocks, they, they sort of do this automatically. You take a clock like the LaCrosse Technologies clock, and the movement on that, rather than having a little red button like this and a setting wheel, all it has is four buttons for uh, the time zone, mountain time, well in my case mountain time. So it goes Eastern, Central, Mountain, and Pacific time. It's got those four buttons there. So for a lot of people that's more trouble free. You put in a battery, you press the time zone button, and you just, that's all you do. Uh, my doing it this way, that's just the way this movement was designed to operate. Um, I think that uh, it allows the manufacturer to save a little bit of money in mass producing these to have that little bit different design. It, it requires you as the user to do just a little couple extra steps there when you set the clock and then it's fine. It runs wonderfully and it's a very robust clock. I've had clocks that are somewhat delicate, you know, just uh, if you happen to uh, bump it too hard when you're, when, um, you know, it's on the table like this, what if, what if it just fell over and oh, got a hard bump. Not enough to break the clock face or anything, but it is sometimes enough to ruin the movement on some of the earlier movements I might have gotten. So this atomics movement, I'm very happy with the sturdiness uh, of this movement. It, it, it holds up really well. You know, you don't want to abuse it too bad, but it, just a few bumps here and there. Maybe you got it in a box while you're moving to a new apartment or something. Uh, this will hold up better than some of the other movements. And the lacrosse technology movement, uh, that's pretty good too. The movement that I've had the most trouble with as far as it being really delicate is called a Hetchinger movement. And it used to be common in some of the first radio controlled analog clocks that I purchased maybe, I don't know, 13, 14 years ago. Uh, but you don't see it around too much anymore. So anyway, it's, uh, it's on its way. Now another thing, because you are able to set the clock using this little dial like you would on the old-fashioned quartz movements, it would allow you to have this clock set to something other than the right time. So if you are the kind of person that says, I want all my clocks five minutes fast, you could do it with this clock. And in fact, even after it's set itself, um, you could take that opportunity to go ahead and um, reset it to a new time. And then it would still set itself according to daylight saving time. And it would always, let's say, you know, you chose to be five minutes off all the time. It would continue to be five minutes off exactly that same amount after daylight saving time changes and you know just keep doing that. So as we see now on the first clock that I set it has successfully processed the WWVB information and now it's setting itself. It was just a little bit slow so um, it's got to race around just a little bit faster than normal until it reaches the correct time which is going to be uh, well any moment now. There you go and now it's ticking regularly uh, you know, and, and you know, not that much fun to watch now. It just looks like a regular old clock, but that's how that does it. And then this one here, I expect within the next couple of minutes, we'll also have processed uh, the kind of the next time signal from WWVB, and it'll, it'll be set to the right time itself.